Welcome to Beyond the Coverage. I'm Chris Horner, and today I want to talk a little bit about Tour of Flanders. Now, on yesterday's butterfly effect for Tour of Flanders, I left out two important things that I wanted to talk about, but we were running out of time with a 20-minute video already, so I thought I'd bring you another Beyond the Coverage video here on Monday and talk a little bit more in depth about the Bahrain victorious rider, Philippe Messijouk, who crashed everybody at 140 kilometers to go. I want to bring it up because I don't think he's at fault. I know everybody's losing it right now, right? He just cost 50 guys to crash. And yes, he's the guy who caused the crash. I didn't say he didn't cause the crash. I said he's not at fault. Now, the reason why he's not at fault is because when you're racing in Belgium or anywhere in the world, but especially in Belgium and especially at the Tour of Flanders, whenever guys can, can move up, they're going to move up on the sidewalks. They're going to move up in the parking lot spaces. They're going to move up every direction they possibly can. And the UCI haven't done enough to prevent this from happening. Now, yesterday, 50 guys plus crashed on, on that massive pile up there at 140 kilometers to go. So it's easy to go, oh my goodness, man, Philippe caused this crash. The Bahrain victorious rider, what was he thinking? I've read some of the comments where they said he turned right into the peloton. Guys, he didn't turn into the peloton. What exactly happens at this moment at 140 kilometers to go is you see the parking structures for all the residential houses on the cobblestones there. So the riders are going on the parking structure so that the, when the road opens up, they go to the parking structure, they round the front of the peloton and try to get to the front before you come up to the grass sections. The grass sections in Belgium are put there so people can't drive in the parking spots for a long period of time at all because they know there's going to be grass coming up. Now in the bike race, the riders are just doing anything they can because this is the biggest one day race in the world because it's one of the five monuments, it's Tour of Flanders. So whenever it opens up to the parking cobble structures there, the riders are always going to go into that section because the UCI allow it. Now I believe the UCI aren't going to be able to control it because I've raced Tour of Flanders and I've raced up in Belgium just about every race they have up there and there's no way of keeping a bunch of guys in their 20s that are almost 200 strong field away from using every bit of space they possibly can to move up. I've moved up in the grass. I've moved up in the gravel. I've moved up in parking spots. I've moved up when the corner split and there's a little gas station there and you've cut through the gas station. If you can do it, I have done it. And so has every other rider that's raced up in Belgium. If they tell you they haven't, they've lied to you. Now, well, let's get back into the, into the action so I can explain it a little bit further. As he's coming up in the cobblestone spot there, he can't make it before the grass to be able to get over the top of the peloton, the UAE Team Emirates riders on the left side of the road. He can't make it. So Philippe does a great job of deciding that I can't make that without crashing someone. So he's going to go through the grass. Now, the kid doesn't know the grass is full with water. He doesn't know it has potholes in it. He doesn't know that when he comes out of the out of the grass there, that's about a 15, 20 foot maximum bit of grass, which is really normally quite safe for riders to pass through when it's a flat section like this. He doesn't know what's gonna happen. We see him come off the cobblestone, splash into the deep, deep grass and water as it comes up. And then when he comes back out on the cobblestones, his bike's gonna hit that. We take a look at the picture, his foot's already come out of the right pedal and his bike is already turning to the right so anyone thinks that who thinks that he turned into the peloton and crashed him you're dead wrong he doesn't have any choice once he hits dead onto that onto the cobbles it's going to make his bike go one direction or another and it happened to be it made it to the right like i said his foot has slipped out of the pedals he really doesn't have control at this moment we see him slam straight into the UAE Team Emirates rider that pushes everyone into the center of the, of the road and then causes the massive crash. Now, as we see, he pulls out the crash. Philippe doesn't go down, but we see him look over his shoulder and he realizes what he's done. And you know the Bahrain victorious rider feels bad. So then he clips his foot out again, trying to get the front of the race to pause and stop for everybody to come back. But this is Flanders. It's 140 kilometers to go. So all the guys who didn't crash, they're thinking like, great, I got my opportunity to win Tour of Flanders and they're going full gas. But at no point in time did the Bahrain victorious rider ever want to crash the field. 
This was a 100% accident, and it's nothing that he could have done about it or nothing that any rider could have done. I can show you three other moments throughout the Tour of Flanders where that same tactic was being used, and one of them where it caused a crash because they come into the narrow sections going up the hill up onto the left side of the dirt there, and then we see the riders crash there, and it was after this moment that the Bahrain victorious Philippe caused everyone to crash, and they're still doing the same tactics. They're still going to do it at the very next race up in Belgium. So unless a rider causes a crash on purpose, I don't believe you can DQ them. They did DQ them and I felt really bad for the Bahrain victorious rider, even worse for the riders who crashed. There's no doubt about that because guys were sent to the hospital. But that is called racing in Belgium. It's always going to happen. And I don't believe that you penalize a rider because 50 guys went down. You either penalize the rider because he's done something wrong or he's crashed people on purpose. And when we look at Philippe's tactic there of passing on the left side of the road, everybody's doing that and it was still legal. The fact that they came up to the grass and he lost control and then everybody crashed, that was just on accident. There is nothing there that was done on purpose. So I feel really bad for the Bahrain victorious for getting pulled out of the Tour of Flanders. And to be fair, guys, I've been crashed by accidents like this many times, and I've never blamed the rider because I know that's just what happens when you're racing up in Belgium or you're racing anywhere in the world where there's a lot of stress and the roads get narrow. It's just an accident, and that's all I can see it. So I've, like I said, I would have never had DQ'd Philippe Messijuk at any point in time for that crash because it was purely accidental and it was still done under the rules of the UCI, at least what they up hold. I mean, guys, if you're going to let Wal Van Aert go all the way from the center of the road to the right side of the road at the Tour de France and not DQ him, how can you DQ this kid just because a bunch of guys crashed because we all know Wal Van Aert and everybody else could have crashed at these sprint stages too, but they don't DQ him then, and that was done on purpose. This was done 100% on accident. Now, let's talk real quick about the DSM, guys, because at 125 kilometers to go, when they tried that Trek Segafredo tactic of stopping, basically, going up the climb and then full gas, those guys were a bunch of knuckleheads. Didn't they understand that with Trek Segafredo, when they did that tactic, tactic, it didn't work? And now DSM could see it didn't work because they had nobody at the front of the peloton at the end of Tour of Flanders. So I hope that's the last of that we see of the Trek Segafredo track tactics ever again here at the Belgium Classics. Anyways, that might that's my take there on Beyond the Covers. I hope you can understand what I mean by the Bahrain Victorious is purely accident, and I hope you can easily understand what I mean by DSM's goofy tactics of stopping the race going up a climb, basically, and then full gas sprint. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next edition somewhere in the near future of on Beyond the Coverage.